Hello and welcome back to another Fish Fridays with me, Ben, the Amity Angler, where every Friday at 6 p.m. I'll sit and discuss with you one of the many fish species we've got here in the UK and I'll talk rigs, sizes, locations and tactics. I'll even throw in a few top tips as well. And this week we're going to talk about the bass. Let's go. So the bass then, located all around the UK, and it's really widespread actually this one, all through Spain, Portugal, down through Italy, all up north in Scotland and across to Norway as well. Really well populated fish. It's been heavily, heavily targeted, and anyone in the angling community will be aware of the various campaigns that have gone on over the last few years. Uh, some successful, some not, but they've been really, really heavily targeted by commercial fishermen purely because of their value. Uh, interestingly though, the value of bass has only really been a thing the last sort of 15, 15, 20 years really. Back in the 80s when my dad was fishing, um, bass didn't have any commercial value, neither did cuttlefish incidentally. Uh, and the story is my dad caught an eight pound bass, um, went into a lobster pot, uh, which, which as you know, anyone who does lobster fishing, that happens quite often with fish. Uh, yeah, eight pound bass got into a big round lobster pot they had on the wrecks and they just chopped it up for bait. Eight pound bass, boom, 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 four sections, bits of bait, didn't even think about it. Now that wouldn't even be dreamt of now by a commercial. That would be a good, a good 90, 100 pounds worth of fish, if not more, you know. So the value of bass is really high at the minute, really popular fish was across in restaurants. So the demand for it is really, really high. Recently, there's been a lot of campaigns to limit one, how many bass that anglers can take. It's now two with certain months in clove seasons. And then also how much that commercials get across the varying different methods. So rod and liners, uh, trammel netting, gill netting, and trawling. And they've also banned a number of methods as well, such as pair trawling in certain areas. And pair trawling is where two boats will tow one net. And it used to be devastating, especially down here at King Mere Reef, where it's a big bream mark, but you also get a hell of a lot of bass. They, having, having done it for my sins twice, I know exactly what gets caught in there and how much at times, and it is devastating. Thankfully, that method is banned now in that location, and all the other implements we've got in place, despite what some naysayers will tell you, the bass is there in numbers. There's lots of them. The trouble we're having at the minute is that um, people are finding a lot of smalls, and they're going, well, the big ones have gone, and there's no big ones about personal opinion and it is just a personal opinion is that the numbers are now so healthy and they're not where we want them to be everyone always wants more fish especially anglers but worth noting on the flip side deviating slightly is that commercials also don't want to see these fish disappear yes they will catch them and they sell them and that's how they pay their money but there's no benefit to anybody if they go extinct so don't think the commercials don't want healthy stocks as well because they do especially the rod and line bass fishermen they will campaign a lot alongside anglers to get various other methods banned because they understand the value of the species. So going back to the sizes, people are talking about the there's no big ones and we haven't seen any big ones. Personal opinion is there's just so many smaller ones now, they're just beating, beating the, the bigger fish to the baits by sheer weight of numbers. Um, whereas before the numbers were down, you'll have a few big ones in a shoal and a few small ones. Now you've got lots of small ones and a few big ones in there as well. I think it's just a small numbers game. So coming on to records then, the current shore record is a 19 pound 12 ounce fish held by the Mr. John Fishlocker. Um, he's had that down at Portsmouth. You can read all about that online and he's obviously got pictures up and I'll put one in here now of that fish. Um, yeah, 19 pound 12, the current record. However, it is a big however, I know it's been beaten twice. There was a 21 pound fish caught somewhere. I can't remember where it was caught. I think it was down West Country somewhere. Um, but it went back alive, so it wasn't ratified because the barbaric system of uh, record fish is you have to kill them, send them in, get them officially weighed. Absolutely in the past, that is. And I think they are looking to bring that in. Um, but also there was a 22 pound fish caught up in the Bristol Channel. And I'll put a picture of that in here now. Yeah, 22 pound fish, widely regarded as that is the record. But again, it's unofficial because it wasn't sent in, weighed up and officially measured. That man, well done him, he put it back. But yeah, so it has been beaten a couple of times, that sure record. And I also know of bigger fish as well, locally that have been caught, not from the shore, but from the boat. So there is bigger ones out there. Onto boats then. One of them things, again, where the boat record is less than the shore record. 
um, but the boat record is a 19 pound nine fish. And again, I know of lots of 18, 19 pound fish caught. There's been a good handful of 18 pounders caught out of Brighton. One of them by my friend on his birthday, commercial guy, Rod and Lion. Um, yeah, 18 pound fish. And there was also years ago, I remember seeing a 22 pound fish in the market that had supposedly been caught by a Rod and Lion fisherman, but he kept it quiet because he didn't want the spot given away. So, you know, the records are there, but they have, I'm, I'm, I'm almost, I know the shore one's been beaten and I know the boat one's been beaten, that it's not official. So there's bigger bass out there. Over in the warmer climates, they regularly get bass sort of 25 pound plus. And a little story from me now is my little brother was working on the trawlers uh, just back end of last year. And he had a bass that went back alive. They couldn't, they didn't have any quota. So, and I watched it swim off. Um, but he had a, a bass that was absolutely monstrous and I've got a photo of it here and I'll put it in but it was a monstrous bass and I've shown this to people and I actually shared it on my empty angler page uh, and it was shared wide, high and wide it was shared all over and it was widely said that was a, a very big 20 uh, and my brother's a carp fisherman and he's held many a 20 pound carp and he said this fish just was the top end so make it up what you will less you wait you don't know um, but like I said, there's a lot of uh, credibility to, to that fish as well. So if you're after a record bass, I think it's one of those fish where there's a very good chance that that fish is floating around. So coming on to baits then. Now then, this will vary depending on the time of year um, and who the angler is, because everyone's got their favorite methods and where you are in the country. So with bass, I mean, it depends on what, it depends on so many factors as to what bait is best. They take a lot of baits, they take squid, mackerel, pout, whiting, um, gobies, peeler crab, they, 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 they'll eat a lot of different baits, but certain baits will work better at certain times of the year and certain times of water clarity. So if the water's crystal clear or it's murky, one bait will outfish the other. Uh, but generally speaking, live bait is king, live pout, live whiting, or a blenny or a goby, that tends to be king out on the wrecks, scads, my favorite live bait is baby scad, the little four to five inch ones, because they're more hardier than a mackerel, I find, tend to last longer, can take a hit or two. Um, but yeah, baits wise, that's how you're gonna fish for these with you know, a nice whole squid on a penal, um, and then obviously a live mackerel hook once through the nose, or you can piggyback it, so hook through the back. Um, there's a number of ways you can do it, um, but generally baits, it's gonna be what is in the area. When the squid come in, March, April time, and then back end of autumn, squid bait's gonna be what they're gonna be so focused on. Big, big calorific meal. What I mean by that is they're not eating little tiny shrimps where there's not much calories in it for a bass. Bass are very switched on. They will know what's gonna fill them up and what's gonna give them the most value. When them squid are in, they're gonna be on there for three, four weeks, bang, and they they're sometimes ignore other baits to focus on what is there. The whole match the hatch thing comes in to play when you're doing this. It's no good giving them something that's not there or that they're not feeding on because they just won't take it. Uh, spider crab is another good one. When spider crab come into peel, what I mean by that is they're shedding their shells. Bass fishermen will go down and collect them from the rocks or they'll speak to commercial friends when they get them in their nets and they wrap it all up into little sausages and that is absolutely deadly for them. And they'll sit there from the shore and this is touching into methods a little bit now, but they're cast out just behind the second or third breaker in two, three foot of water with this, with this crab bait or a squid and they'll be pulling out big double figure fish. And you'd be surprised at how shallow you will get bass in. The killer bait for, if you wanna catch a bass of any size, and it's almost a cheat code, is live prawn. Really easy to collect. Harbors, rock pools, marinas. You can use drop nets, traps, or just scoop nets, or a push net as well. A lot of people do down on the sandy beaches. Um, but live prawn, hook once for the tail, either on either free lined, a running ledger, or a float, which I'll come on to in a minute. Absolute cheat code. It does tend to get a lot of smaller fish. If you're after a big one, then you wanna be sticking a whole squid on or a mackerel, um, but prawns, absolutely deadly. I would say for overall catch rate, prawn is probably up there with the best bait in terms of numbers. Not quality, but to catch a bass, oh. We used to go and sit down at New Haven Swing Bridge with a couple of SSG split shot on a straight to the, on a mono line, a single prawn on a hook, just flick it out and you used to pull schoolies out 20, 30 at a time for a session all day long on live prawn. Um, uh, it does get the bigger fish if you're fishing it right on a, you know, you're setting your depths right on your float and your rest of it. But generally, 
Oh yeah, absolutely killer. So tackle then, so depending on how you're fishing, um, lure fishing, nice light spinning rod, Storm GT, fish minnow, whatever your preference is, surface lure, hard plastic, soft plastic, lure fishing for bass is absolutely That's brilliant, and I've got friends that make a living doing it for charter boats, and also guiding from the shore doing that. Real, real fun way of catching bass on the lure. Uh, so any spinning setup you want, little little sort of three or 4,000 spinning reel. I've got a, um, a Pen Battle 3 is what I use. I use that for a lot of fishing, but I use it for the bassing as well. Um, and that'll take a light ledger as well, two, three, four ounce lead plopped about and all your hard and soft plastic. So yeah, nice spinning setup. Uh, from the shore then, depending on how you're fishing, a heavy carp rod will probably do you in some instances with a nice heavy bait runner or a pit type reel if you're going to sit there and touch ledger, um, which will come on to rigs in a minute. Um, but yeah, other than that, you'll find a lot of people will get bass on any manner of, manner of rigs and tactics at certain times of the year. It's one of those fish where if people get one, they're really excited to see it, but they will pick up pennels, little tiny mackerel feathers, hawkeyes, uh, free up flappers with lugworm on it, a bass will pick it up at times, so it doesn't really matter what you're using, but as with any type of fishing, scale your gear down to get the most sport out of it. Um, it's a bit like mackerel fishing, I don't like using a broom handle rod and 10 feathers, I like going light, little spinner, and getting them one at a time to get the sport out of it. Bass is the same. That said, think about your locations, if you're fishing a big heavy reef, don't be going in there with a light spinning rod, because if you do get a monster, it will just snap you up. So something to think about. Okay, rigs then. Now I don't pretend to be an expert bass fisherman from the shore. I'm not even an expert boat bass fisherman. Uh, I like catching bass, but they don't, they don't wow me like they do everybody else. I will have sessions where I want, I feel like, do you know what? I'm gonna go and target some bass on the float today, or I'm gonna go live baiting. I do get that little urge sometimes, but they don't take up my whole life. So for me, I know how to bass fish and I'm not bad at it but there's people out there that may go, oh, this is a better way of doing it. So by all means, this is just a few ways of doing it. Um, my favorite way of catching bass is on the float. I absolutely love it. There is nothing better than going up in an inside reef or a bit of shallow water, and you can do this from the, from the shore or on the boat, um, and setting a float to the depth. So when you're setting your float, it's very, float fishing is so simple. It's just a bead, um, a bead and a stop knot, your float, another bead and a weight down to a swivel. That allows the float to travel up your line. And then you've got your length of fluorocarbon to a little size, uh, a little a little circle look, a size four or a size six circle look is my favorite way of doing it. Um, something like a Cox and Rule circle or a Varavas circle, they work well as well. And prawns or little tiny pouts that I collect from my local harbor. Um, and you just trot that down the tide, set your float to the shallowest point of the reef you're fishing, if you know it. So if you've got a reef that's 40 foot and 30 foot, you would set your float to 30 foot. Because if you have it 40 foot, when it gets to that shallow bit, it's gonna snag up and you lose your gear or you just be dragging the bottom. So set your float to the shallowest point and then just trot the baits down the tide. The float, it will find the tide, it will find the currents. And I've got some good videos, uh, my bass fishing videos, if you flick through and have a look of me doing this in Berlin Gap. And a float, it, sometimes it goes around in circles where it's got around a rock and there's an eddy going around, that's where those bass are and that float just finds them. And there's nothing better than watching it just go boom and it sail away. Uh, and sometimes you don't even see where it's gone. And I'll put a little clip in here to demonstrate that. Sat there watching it on. When you're float fishing, you're like, where's the float gone? And suddenly it dawns on you, it's gone under. So yeah, float fishing, my favorite way. Another way of doing things is, um, is touch ledgering. So this is a bit of a, bit of a dark art, it's a bit of a skill to it. Um, and the, the pros who do it, and I've got some very, very good bass fishermen friends who do this every day of the week, when it's blowing a storm force, whatever, and it's 30 mile an hour southwesterly winds, and a southwesterly here on the coast is, is generally a preferred direction uh, for bass fishermen. When everyone's locked up at home for hot chocolate and a, and a, a blanket, they're out there standing there with their rod in their hand, finger over the line, and they've cast 20, 30 yards out, literally, behind the breaker, and they're standing there holding it, waiting for that rod to jerk out their hand, and they have some very, very big fish doing that. We're talking 16, 17 pound fish, you know, uh, loads of doubles. That's how the, the big girls fall, is to generally the touch ledger in, in a storm, on a nice shallow beach. And again, I've got people that travel up and down the country chasing the big fish. We're very, very good at it. Um, 
their baits and methods, they vary, but again, squids, little joey mackerels and all the rest of it, okay? That's generally how they're doing that. Um, they fish a lot up rivers as well. You actually get a lot of bass up rivers. There was a 18 pound bass caught on a roach live bait, I think 12 or 15 miles, maybe even more, up the River Arran uh, in, in virtually fresh water. So they, the bass will travel up as well, but ledgering, gonna catch them like that. On a boat, it's gonna be live baiting primarily if you're over wrecks or lures, but that's gen generic lure fishing, however you're gonna do your lure in. Um, on a boat, it's gonna be a live bait rig, so a running redger, locked in lead, or, or however you're gonna fish it. You can fish it with a freeway swivel with the, the bit offshoot, have your live bait like that. But it's gonna be lip hooked through the nose of a mackerel or a pout, and you're gonna drift over the wreck on the ground, and you're gonna be keeping in touch with the bottom, couple of turns up, and you will know when a bass is near because the live bait will start going crazy because it doesn't want to be eaten. So if you're getting the odd nod and suddenly your live bait's going crazy, brace yourself because there's a fish coming. Almost nine times out of 10, that's a big indicator that there is a bass nearby. And occasionally a pollock will pick it up as well. Don't think it's just bass that will take a live bait out there on the water. Um, so yeah, great indicator is the rod going crazy. Now another method that I've tried and I actually quite enjoy and I started doing it when I had my old boat, Bonefish, and we could get right up inside on the reefs. Uh, and it's a method that the old boys always used to talk about when I was in the tackle shops. Uh, and down here, we've got two piers, and one of them's closed now. But it's a really high pier. And they used to go, oh, no, you do this method here. You Loads of bass, big bass. And I used to sit there as a kid and take it all in. And it's basically where you get a weight on the end of your line and onto a length of, uh, length, doesn't have to be fluoro, it's a length of mono with a swivel. Um, so basically it's on like a, you know, it's, it's on the, it doesn't have to be a rotten bottom, but a swivel stops your bait sliding further down to the weight. So you can make that 30 centimeters, 60 centimeters, and that's it on your rig to the rod. And then they cast that out to wherever they want to fish off this pier. And then what they do is they wind down tight, stick it on a rod rest, and then on a length of fluorocarbon with your bait on it, so your live pout, your mackerel, whatever it is you're using, you have a large clip swivel. And all you do is you clip that to your now tight line and you send the pout down, and you can use the rod to bounce it down if it's not traveling down on its own, depending on the height of the uh, pier you're fishing from. Yeah, and that pout hits that water, and because it's on that swivel, it has the freedom to go up and down in the water column. All the way down to that swivel that you set by your weight, that pout can travel up and down, up and down, and the bass go absolutely crazy for it. And I did it one night with Dino last year, or the year before in Bonefish, and we were sat there and we did it from the boat. So. Flick a lead out, put it in the holder, clip your bait on and send it down in pure pitch black darkness. Bass were jumping everywhere around us and we had five fish in five minutes. It was literally one would go and at one point we had three rods going. It was absolutely chaotic and it was uh, when I just started filming and I hadn't quite worked out how to get the best filming at night. Uh, I wish we had done because it would have been an epic session. But they were just bomb, 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 bomb and it, they absolutely going crazy for these clips on pout. They were loving life. So... That's another method you can use. And I will do a video on that, that method actually because it's, it's an old boy method, but that saying of the old ways are the best ways, I'm a, a big fan of that way of fishing, big fan, especially anchor onto a reef, love it. You can sit back off a mark so your boat doesn't scare the, the fish, cast the weight onto where the, where the reef is and then send your bait down to it. And over as, it, as, it, as time goes on, five minutes, 10 minutes, that pout's gonna be swimming down over that reef. Oh, absolutely delightful. Okay, top tips then, here we go. So first one is fresh is best. If you're fishing dead baits or even live baits, all right, get the fresh stuff. It makes a massive difference. And I actually give uh, a lot of bait to some bass friends of mine when the joeys come in on the mackerel and I, th they tell me that their catches are significantly different between the frozen stuff that they buy in the shops and the fresh stuff that they get. Now, there'll be people out there going, ah, no, that's not right. I'm telling you now, when it comes to bassing, fresh is best. So make sure your bait is fresh um, and you never go too far wrong. Second tip I'm gonna give you, a real common one, but it's a good one, so I'll throw it in there and applicable to the shore or the boat, and that is look for the birds. What I mean by that is if you see a patch of seagulls working, whether it be, uh, I mean, I've seen birds working in shoals or flocks, sorry, that are 100 strong. I've seen them 10, 12, 15 miles offshore 
and has a bass shoal there working bait fish up, be it mackerel or herring, whatever it is, and I've seen them miles offshore, and when you go in there, it's all bass. So don't ignore the signs. You go out wondering where these fish are to a mark, and you think, oh, there might be some fish behind there. They have a bird's eye view. They're often 50, 100 foot up. They can see things that you can't see at ground level. Look for the birds, find the birds, and you find the bass. Same from the shoreline. If you see a lot of birds working, might just be mackerel chasing white bait, but primarily where there's mackerel showed up, there's definitely predators below them. You just gotta get there and find them. So look for the birds, find the bass. Okay, third tip I'm gonna give you then is from the shore, all right? So no one likes seaweed when they're fishing. People hate it. Clogs up your line and the rest of it. I totally get that, understand it. However, from a bass point of view from the shore, if you're on a shingle beach, take a look at where the tide line is washing up the seaweed. Because when you go along there, what you're gonna see is that seaweed as the tide comes in and out and vice, you know, happens all day long, every night, every day. That seaweed dries out, flies get on it, maggots happen. Tide comes in again, those maggots wash into the water. Bass will go absolutely mental for this, absolutely crazy. And you will get more success bass fishing where there's loads of weed washed up on the beach, unless there's features out there on the ground. But generically speaking, if you've got a nice shingle beach or a sandy beach, look for where the seaweed is washed up, because that's where all the bait is going to have washed up as well. And that's where you're going to be wanting to sling in your baits. In that seaweed, just, just little, little, little flicks out, and you're going to find a lot of bass in there, because they're going to be picking off all the flies and the maggots and whatever else on that high tide line when that tide washes back in. Fourth tip for the bass end, you're getting a few from me today here, all right? Um, this is uh, primarily beginner level. However, um, it's applicable to a lot of adults as well, because I see adults doing it from the shore. And I don't do a lot of shore fishing now because of my legs, clearly, but I know how to shore fish for bass. Don't cast out too far all the time. Sometimes you need to punch bait out, especially when you're place fishing and stuff like that. I get it, people want to blast it out. But the same thing actually applies for those sort of fish as well. More often than not, the fish are only 20, 30 yards out. They're not out there miles out in the deep water. And quite often you'll be casting over them and you'll be thinking, oh, there's no fish here. And they'll be working, they'll be working the shoreline. I've seen bass in Cookmere River, just around the corner from me. It's a, it's a big reefy area. It's got a river that runs up, really good for bass in its own right and flounder. But when I was commercial, I've been in there before and the bass have been that shallow, I've sat there rod and line fishing for them, and their backs have been out the water. Their heads down in there eating them prawns and them crabs. As that tide washes in, an area can be completely dry. As that water washes in, all those crabs and crustaceans that are living in those little tiny pockets of water that can't get anywhere because they've been dried out almost. As that tide washes in, them bass are there. They're literally almost swimming on the land to get in there. And I promise you that is the case. And again, people from the shore are boo, casting right out and the bass have already gone past where they've cast and they're in nudging the shore, trying to get these fish that's been exposed in the, in the, in the rock pools for so long. So don't cast out too far. By all means, if you've got two rods, bang one out, do an, a, a, literally an underarm hand flick. 20, 30 yards behind a second or third breaker. Generally, that's where you're gonna find them, in the surf. So think about it, be smart, vary your options, and don't discount the fact that more often than not, they're probably at your feet. Well, that's been another Fish Fridays. Thanks for watching, I do hope you're enjoying these. I'm getting a lot of positive feedback from them. We have got a whole series on Fish Fridays, which depending on when you're watching, will either have six or seven videos, or it might have 40 videos, depending on how late you're joining me to my channel. If you're late, wherever you've been. But please do like and subscribe, and I'll catch you again next week for another Fish Fridays. See you soon.